Hey guys, Dina here and welcome to another video. Today I will be reviewing some ARCs that I have received, well, a few recently, but mostly some are way overdue for me to review. And I would first like to thank all the publishers for providing me with these ARCs via NetGalley. And uh, now I'm just going to jump right into it. The first book that I want to talk about is The Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. And this was released officially last year. I received the ARC in June. Um, not sure why they're releasing it again, probably because, I don't know, some version of the book comes out and they wanted to promote it again. Anyways, this is, uh, well, I guess sci-fi book, but I would barely classify it as that. There's uh, not a lot of science in it, there's just some aliens, <laughs> and I guess that qualifies this as that. Anyways, this is a book about this girl who... I uh, just graduated from college, she is living in New York and she's struggling a bit financially and one night she's walking home and she comes across this huge sculpture, metallic sculpture and she's completely intrigued by it and she calls her friend and together they film a video and post it on YouTube and overnight they get really famous and um, I guess exposed to the world and as it turns out this is not the only ro uh, well statue robot whatever you want to call it uh, there are many more in the world and everybody's intrigued by them and of course uh, she sort of you know she was the first to expose the world to them or to post about them and as such people turn to her um, for information I guess and um, I did enjoy the book a lot, I have to say. It was not my favorite of all of the books that I read this year, but it's really intriguing and really a fast read. Um, I did not care for the main character. I, you know, she sort of represents our culture or, you know, our obsession with social media these days where we are all striving for more likes and comments and all that and just more exposure, I guess. And the more you have of that, the more you want. And uh, she really falls into that pit. And um, luckily she, she realizes that and, you know, she's not blind to what is happening to her, uh, but she does milk that cow, <laughs> she sure does. Anyway, so I did not really care for her in that vein, uh, but um, despite that, you know, she, as I said, if you know what the, the author is trying to portray, that's fine then. And also uh, there was a lot of other social uh, commentary in the book that is a very current and uh, I did enjoy some, not other, but yeah, anyways, you know, it's a, it's a good book, uh, easy to read, the writing is really simple to get into, and I really enjoyed it. There's apparently going to be a sequel, so I'm looking forward to reading that one as well, because I do want to find out uh, more, I guess. So yeah, that's the first book that I wanted to read. The second one is Mark Lawrence's One Word Kill that came out, I think, in May, and there's also a sequel already out, and the third book in the series is coming out at the end of the year, so uh, this is a really great publishing <laughs> schedule, if you ask me. And this is a young adult sci-fi series, and um, it sort of reminds me of, well, I think it would remind anyone, of Stranger Things, uh, that's also a very popular series on uh, Netflix. And this book takes place in the 80s, it follows a bunch of boys. They are sort of nerds, geeks, and they have this uh, Dungeons and Dragons group that they are all part of and they play the game. And there's this girl that joins them and then uh, sort of one of these boys, the main character, uh, finds out that he's sick, he has cancer, and uh, he's struggling with that as well. But there's also this uh, intriguing man that keeps appearing around him and whenever he's around, strange things are happening. And of, of course, the, this boy wants to find out what that, what's going on. So I uh, have to say that I really enjoyed it. It was, again, not my favorite, but I'm more intrigued, not necessarily by separate books, but by the whole that uh, Mark Lawrence is trying to, um, I guess, put together. Uh, there's some time travel, there's things happening. Uh, that the characters have to solve, some tasks they have to go through, and it was a really enjoyable read. Again, uh, probably not his best work, but it's definitely enjoyable. Uh, it's But it's nothing like his epic fantasies, so, you know, do not get confused by that. It's a completely different beast. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, honestly really enjoyed it. Uh, I will pick up the sequels, but probably more towards the end of the year when all the three books are out so I can binge read them. Uh, the next book that I would like to review is one that has been out for a while and that is C.J. Tudor's The Chalkman. Um, this is a sort of murder mystery thriller 
horror potentially type of book or is trying to be anyways I have to say that they did not care for it it follows a group of boys or you know yeah we, there's a dual timeline we see what's happening now and what's happening in the past and we follow these boys that stumble onto something and it impacts them for the rest of their lives there's also these chalk figures that are really intriguing and obviously you and they are trying to figure out what's going on um, uh, it's also a way for the boys to communicate in these chalk figures. Uh, so yeah, I have to say, as I said, that I didn't really care for it. Um, I was intrigued, sort of, because uh, throughout the book you learn different things about certain characters and, you know, your opinion keeps changing who's guilty and all that. But it wasn't that thrilling, I didn't think, and it didn't impact me as much, uh, the whole mystery. And... Uh, yeah, I just didn't like it that much, but obviously I'm in minority because people really like it. So, uh, you know, if you're intrigued by it, definitely go and read it. The next book that I want to talk about is actually one that I DNF'd and that is Naomi Novik's Spinning Silver. I actually read like 80% of this book and I, I just I just couldn't push myself to read more. This is about a girl that, you know, her father, she lives in a small village and her father is uh, a money lenderer and uh, he's really bad at it because, you know, he does give money away but he never collects it. So his daughter decides to actually do his job and she's actually really good at it. So they are, you know, they go from poor to actually well off and um, she does really well. She can turn silver into gold and uh, her reputation sort of goes out and people learn of her and that sort of brings the this creature to her that um, wants to use that uh, to his advantage. So, you know, it's a retelling, uh, so, you know, it's a fairy tale sort of. So I'm really not good at those and I really don't like retelling. So I'm not sure why I thought that I was going to like it. Uh, I mean, I know, I hope that I was going to like it because people are really raving about Naomi Novik and her uh, retellings, but it just, it just wasn't for me. Uh, we also follow a bunch of other characters and some are introduced rather late in the story and feel unnecessary. And I just, uh, what I really didn't like was the fact that you learn a certain part of the story from different perspectives. So it's like rereading, you know, and it, it was annoying because I already know that, don't, you know, just, it was annoying to uh, see that happen. But again, I'm in the minority of not liking this book. People seem to like it again, so obviously don't, uh, you know, just don't follow necessarily my opinion, but uh, look into it for yourself. And the last book that I want to talk about is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is, again, a young adult sci-fi book, a uh, beginning of a series. I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be a trilogy or a quartet. Um, but anyways, the sequel comes out uh, in November, I think. And this is about a girl called Spencer. She lives in a, in this world where humans had to flee Earth and they sort of crashed into some... I'm actually not sure what it is. I don't remember exactly. Maybe planet. And uh, they live there. They sort of build new lives there. And um, the problem is they keep they keep being attacked by these aliens and they have to have an air force to protect themselves so uh, Spencer's father was really one of the best pilots that they had and uh, then suddenly he apparently turned on his own people and since then he's been uh, deemed a coward and well he's dead so you know his his reputation is not affecting him but it's impacting his family so he's supposed to be a coward a traitor and all that and Spencer as I said is impacted by that and she wants to prove that he was not any of that. She remembers him as being really brave and all that and a great father. And she wants to follow in his footsteps and she wants to be a pilot. And for her, that's really hard because, of course, because of his reputation, she will not be accepted into the flight school. Uh, but then again, for some reason, she is. And we follow her as she's training. Uh, she also stumbles onto this mysterious object um, that... Um, she sort of connects to and um, in general I had to say that Spencer was annoying a lot of the time she was so oh she was always trying to prove herself so much that uh, sometimes she was really annoying um, but in general I really enjoyed this book it's not necessarily one of my favorite Sanderson books but you know I do mostly prefer his fantasy books um, but I, I do enjoy his young adult as well uh, and um, I mostly was intrigued by the ending 
because I did not see that twist coming and I really enjoyed it. Um, the writing is, you know, it's always easy to get into Sanderson's writing. It's not complex, it's not flowery, it's more, more or less straightforward. And um, yeah, there's some things that you have to catch up, but uh, the learning curve is it's not steep in this one at all. So uh, it's really enjoyable and I do recommend it, obviously, and I cannot wait for the sequel to come out. Uh, later this year. So that's it for this video. Uh, I know that some of my reviews, at least for the books that I have read a while back, were not the most, you know, precise, descriptive or informative necessarily. And anyways, you know, I would always say, do not trust my word, go and check these books out for yourself if you are intrigued by them. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it for this video. I thank you for watching and see you in my next one. Bye!